Hello again, here today on the map Two Brothers. The mode is Domination. I'm in the Tier 10 Japanese aircraft carrier Hakaryu. We have purebred Tier 10 matchmaking, not uncommon these days, thanks to the modified matchmaker. And we're against a midway. Oh, and the game loads up. Sorry about the abrupt disturbance. And the enemy has, as I launched rocket planes, has GK Yamato, so two citadelable. Battleships, that's nice. And then Des Moines, Des Moines Booster, Henry, Smolensk, so pretty annoying. All of them are pretty strong AA boats. The Henry being the most susceptible, and even then he's pretty durable. And then Gearing, Gearing, Hurugumo, Hurugumo. So I'm gonna be bullying the Hurugumos, the Gearings, maybe the Henry, and the two battleships. But pretty tough game. Given the pretty thick AA cover, I'm expecting to. Face? Oh my god, that's a large ping spike if you saw that number over there. Touched uh, four digits for a second. So anyway, given the state of AA ships in the game, we do find the GK, which is nice. I'm gonna ditch some of our rockets. Do you find a Henry inside a Wooster? The Henry's slightly closer. Oof, okay, someone pops a defensive fire. And we are unable to even penetrate the screen, so kind of showing off what happens when you touch a heavy AA screen. Not sure if I touched a flag screen there. Well, that does happen even when you're experienced. I could have turned away, I suppose, and just continued scouting, but it's a pain in the ass. It's a big waste of time, so I prefer not to. Just gonna start by ditching torpedo squadrons. Nothing has changed in the Hakaryu's torpedo squadrons all this time. Still the J5Ns. I'm using the twin setup. The quad setup is no longer with us, having been uh, removed from the game. I'm gonna ditch those into a rock. Maybe I should take a look at the other cap. What say you? The Shurugma seems to be playing pretty cautiously at this cap, so I'm gonna just fly over the center of the map, do some additional spotting. Probably should do a little more spotting as a carrier, but because I'm playing in random, I definitely would be doing so if it was a competitive setting, but because it's randoms, I don't care as much about the spotting screening. Hopefully, oh, my team does get an immediate reset, and the Harugmo, you know, is gonna turn in this way, almost assuredly. Note how I'm still concealed, thanks to excellent concealment of the Hakuryu torpedo bombers at 675 and that's without concealment expert. Oh, Harugma does beach. And he's almost guaranteed to die. Oh god, okay I got ping right as I needed to launch. That's really annoying considering I was in a great position to strike him and finish him off. My torpedoes do arm but it looks like I was off aim thanks to a bit of a odd ping spike. With my last two torpedo bombers I'm gonna hit this Des Moines attack him before he gets ahead, but I think they're probably a bit under lead. But the fast speed of the Japanese torpedo does mean I'm probably going to clip him on the tail with this one. Mm, oh, not quite. Well, that one was anticipated to miss. So we do get spotting information on a gearing outside there, probably because he opened fire. So far I've done zero damage, so great commentary. Thank you very much. We don't seem to have control of either cap. I have more forces on this side, but... You know, I am going to move away from this side because the GK is starting to push up quite significantly. Now based on my glance over here, I don't see a smoke screen, so the gearing either has it or still has either like used it or still has it, so I should at least force him to use the smoke screen. From the fact that I'm not detected even though I'm in inside, well inside his last known position, means this island here is blocking my line of sight, so he should still be in the area. So it looks like he's directly behind it. Still unspotted. That is interesting. What does that mean? Does that mean that smoke? Oh no, it means he's over here. I'm gonna drop a fighter. Try to ping him for my team. Guys, there's a gearing. Swoop away onto the map border. My team has woken up to his existence. He's now smoking, but I will get one good hit on him here. Three rockets for 3,000, opening 3k. Kinda wish I'd 
been able to do this about um, several minutes ago, but what can you do? GK's pretty exposed there, so I'm gonna just try and set a starting fire on him. I'm probably gonna follow up with APD beats to be quite frank, moving my carrier, but in case I do follow up with torpedo bombers, he's not in a great torpedo bomber spot, but Des Moines does pop his defensive fire, just an FYI. Okay, you saw the reticle, you saw the ping. I've <sighs> been having trouble with ping for several patches now, just some ISP issues, I guess you could say. So that's really annoying. Threw away, it looks like, five planes into the Des Moines defensive fire for no reason. Yeah, it's part of the reason I haven't been putting out too many recordings. It's kind of frustrating recording with ping. I have put out some games nevertheless, as you've seen, but having the reticle not line up with reality is definitely a problem. Nah, I assume the defensive fire has ended. So I'm gonna ram these nine planes in, in case I make any big mistakes. I'm gonna arm the attack to dodge the flat buff there. I'm gonna just ditch one set. Do get a perfect Citadel set, just something. It still doesn't def definitely doesn't make up for uh, my lack of an impact so far this game. Now, I would like to follow up straight onto the GK, but he's not exactly in a great position to do so, especially with the Des Moines AA escorting. Now the Des Moines AA escort isn't world ending or anything by any means, but it's still a pretty heavy escort. The lone Yamato shows up. He's immediately a much tastier target. And I might incidentally spot the gearing. Now I doubt he's gonna turn full broadside into me. But I am gonna swoop onto him nevertheless. Lead him a little bit. Provide some incident for spotting onto the gearing. Note the position beside the island means that I'm unlikely to be able to hit him with torpedo bombers, even though I kinda wanted to. Someone does swat the Smolensk for me, which is nice. I'm drop at this angle, try and hit him in the butt. Because I didn't get a perfect execution on angle. That pushes him to the side. I'm spotted in my carrier for some reason, which is concerning. But we'll address that momentarily. I really don't know what's spotting me, actually. Oh, okay, so that was dropped too early. You can see that Y torpedo bomber spread. Why am I detected? I absolutely don't understand what's happening. Although I can see the gearing 16s. Okay, I actually don't understand what's happening. I'm gonna move into the center, I guess? And address that gearing over there, since I am the best equipped ship for the job. I guess I'll move back over there. He smokes. Well, in that case, I have no choice but to hit something else. I could recall the fighters. I really don't understand what is spotting me. I'm gonna provide some air cover for the Salem over here. Also harass that Gearing, who's by himself. Kind of. I'm gonna move outside of the Henry and Des Moines screening. Pop a speed boost to chase after gearing guy over here. Oh, no fighter. You saw me coming for this gearing and you didn't give him a fighter. That is interesting. As he hard breaks. But I can also hard break. So I do dent him. I guess a fighter now? No, that's my fighter. Alright, I'm just straight up confused as to what's happening. I'm detected again, which suggests that the gearing on my side, the one up here, is outside of the smoke. Alright, that's really annoying. I really don't understand what's happening in this game. To, the, to a very large degree, in fact, I don't understand what's happening. I'm gonna launch my APDBs. Take a strike on the Yamto. Because when you're confused, well, just try to kill people, I guess. Okay, 
I have a full squadron, four in reserve, so this should be able to kill the Yamato unless I'm very bad or very unlucky. Should make at least two passes here. Two citadels on the first pass, very easily. I'm gonna touch the Des Moines here, but because he's not popping defensive fire, maybe he has hydroacoustic. I'm definitely gonna survive to make this second pass. And unless Ping screws me hard here, this guy should die. And there's the clean kill. I'm providing, turning myself into a mobile AA platform. The Morn's plunging into the cap by plenty of torpedo bombers, so I'm gonna expend a full torpedo bomber squadron on him. Somehow, in spite of my very rough start, I have managed to at least claw myself up to almost six digits. I'm gonna arm the attack out early because I know where he is, give or take. I'm gonna force him to bow in towards my teammates. In anticipation of that, I'll just launch early, pop my heal here to commence my attack. And he does take one on the bow. Note my torpedoes hit for a whopping 8,000 damage. He's dodging here. So let's accelerate this in. Note the long arming distance of the Japanese torpedo, but high speed and heavy damage means that they are crippling when they hit another 8,000. He's chewing up my planes, but I don't really care. Ooh, okay, ping means these are gonna miss. In an extremely awkward position there. Oh, actually they still armed, which means they might hit him. Broken steering now, which means he's 100% dead. One torpedo left. Because of the low health of my plane, I'll be just gonna drop it here. And someone else finishes him off, which I'm perfectly fine with, to be quite frank. Move into the cap, what's left on the enemy team. Bunch of cruisers. And... Okay, like a pair of midway dive torpedo bombers? I'm not sure. Given the composition of the remaining enemy teammates... I actually have no idea what's happening. Which, uh, you may hear me repeating, but... Playing with ping is definitely not a very fun experience. Oh god, they're all smoked up, huh? That is gross. So the gearing provided them a smoke. Nice team play. I can respect that. And all the cruisers are huddling in it, and my conqueror is shoving into it, which is, um, questionable. Midway guy, are you really gonna fly through my AA aura? I'm gonna recall here, in that circumstance, and attack the gearing on the border here. Okay, so my fighter squadron trims four planes, and my AA kills the rest, so I don't know what he was trying to accomplish there. Hmm. Smoke seems to be fading. I still have two fairly healthy battleships. Now the Conqueror is extremely difficult for these cruisers to take out because, well, it's a fucking Conqueror as a super heal. Hmm. Now I assume that Des Moines is pretty saturated, but he's low enough to where it's worth following up with a uh, rocket plane squadron. So he popped a heal. My Conqueror does drop to gearing torpedoes, which is something that happens. Do I want to hit him again? Someone popped a defensive fire, probably the Wooster. I'm gonna arm early to try and get the defensive bonus. Just looking for a fire, but didn't quite get there. So that was kind of a waste of time. Should have gone after the gearing that used to be on the border. He's since the uh, I'm deceased apparently. We're down points still, so we still need to get into caps, but maybe I can get something done. Gonna pre-drop again. Des Moines is on the edge. I'm gonna bring nine planes in. Just to try and guarantee a kill. No defensive fire this time. He's accelerating. Reticle's green. I'm gonna drop there, see if he's unlucky enough to take a citadel. And he does indeed take a sit. Not only is a pen now, but it's gonna be very hard to hit a heavily maneuvering target like so. So I'm gonna be relying a bit on luck here. 
to guide the bomb right into the center. And I do frag him, because I'm a lucky shitter. We're still down points, though. Get in the cap, get in the cap, gentlemen. And in the meantime, my job is... I don't even know what I'm supposed to do. Get closer to the enemy? Well, kill people, obviously. The closest enemy is the midway, but that's kind of hard ask, so... Maybe I'm supposed to hit the Wooster, in spite of the Wooster being a Wooster. Henry's closer, though. Only have four minutes left, which is not actually that much. My Des Moines is dueling with the other, with the Wooster, which you cannot see. I think I should just guarantee the Wooster kill, if I'm being frank. Do skim some flak, which is trimming the HP on my planes. But I'm going to save my heal for this plunge attempt here against the Wooster. If he pops his defensive fire, I'm never del Oh, fucking hell. That leg. I'm nevertheless going to light him up for my Des Moines. Drop at the last second. I don't really care what I have to do here. Just make sure he stays lit. I'm going to try and get two more torpedoes off. Don't quite get there. 12 left. Okay, so that was a bit of a waste of bombers, but I was trying to get that rooster kill. We need a kill. Alright, so quite obviously here I need to give some fighter support, because even spotting will kill the Henry. He does unfortunately die. He's gonna dodge most of these torpedoes here. Enemy gearing has been doing a good job of staying alive. Ooh, he is also beached though. Which means I have some potential to hit him. Especially if he keeps accelerating like he is. Looks like he's gonna take it. And I do frag one, which is something. Do trade the DD kill back. Gunning for the Henry with the APDBs. Can I claw this game back? Oh, that Des Moines really needs to kill that rooster. I'm gonna light up this Henry for my guys. Arming the drop out quite far because of the Henry's high velocity. Need to drop at the end of my reticle here. Slam him with one citadel. Gonna pop my engine boost cooling consumable. Just to make sure. Let's get onto the target as fast as possible. Here going for raw speed rather than anything else. Coming from behind on the second part of the drop. Beat him like that, and dev strike him. So I should be going for the midway here. He's kind of low. My Des Moines never did find that booster. He's hammering the midway though. I'm not sure if I can penetrate the Midway's anti-aircraft defenses without a heal with only three torpedo bombers, so I'm just gonna go with all five. This is gonna, of course, run me out of torpedo bombers, but what can I do? Pop the engine cooling consumable here, shorten my drive by. Now I cannot use the rockets, right, because of the armored deck. I'm gonna try and preserve these by dropping, but it doesn't look like I'll get there. Use the armor-piercing dive bombers, contribute another 14,000. We do tick, climb ahead in caps finally. Really weird game. I went from doing no damage for the first six minutes to suddenly having damage. Okay, we killed someone, so somebody can die now, and 
Des Moines does clean up the kill. Holy moly, that was way too close. Very, very frightening. Game that came right down to the wire. My music even stopped. But, um, yeah. That was really more exciting than I wanted it to be. On patch 0.89, the release of the uh, pre-release of Italian Cruisers, of course. And Hakuryu is still, of course, a tier 10 aircraft carrier that is exceptionally powerful. Especially in an extended game like this, you did see at the end of the game that my reserves were starting to run low, but nevertheless we did do 160,000 damage. Only 9 torpedo strikes, a lot of our damage came from the dive bombers this game actually. So 17 bomb strikes, of which 10 were citadels. 17 planes interdicted by my hull, 2 incaps, 4 kills, 1 flood, 3 defended ribbons, 21 spawning ribbons, 15 target hits with rockets, so didn't really do that well with the rockets this game. And nine planes interdicted by Interceptor. Team score wise, 3000 base experience. That one is going to be a spicy one. And if we go hop over to the detailed report, as I said, mostly bomb damage. But also a fair amount of torpedo damage. Some especially significant torpedo damage on this destroyer. This guy was a pain in the arse the whole game. We were trying to hunt him down. He smoked his allies. So this guy was actually doing a pretty good job. And like, even though it doesn't... Uh, sorry about that. I got interrupted. Even though his score doesn't reflect that, he was doing a good job in terms of the team play elements. Des Moines, pain in the ass, Henry, well, he got clapped by my bombs at the end. Yamato also showing off her vulnerability to bombs, especially when he pushes up. We only got one perfect drop on the GK, but one perfect drop is still heavy amounts of damage. One torpedo strike on the midway. I don't think this guy was very good. Where is he on his team? Oh, he's in a gold clan, which is similar to mine, I guess. But maybe he gets carried. But anyway bunch of AA defense you saw in the mid game, I was mostly a mobile anti-aircraft platform. If we look at aircraft lost here, you can tell I threw away a lot of my torpedo bombers, especially that one attempt on the Wooster, which I didn't land any hits on him. I lost 11 torpedo bombers in one attack, so probably not something you want to do in terms of cost-benefit analysis, but I felt it was worth it to try and get that strike off. I was trying to get the Des Moines to kill him earlier in the game rather than at the end when he did, but it did not end up working out for me. I threw away 11 torpedo bombers for nothing, and as a result, I wouldn't have been able to kill the midway by myself uh, if my allies hadn't shot him up. But yeah, pretty good result. And credit-wise, I am running on premium time thanks to the graciousness of the super containers from the anniversary event, so some good income. And yeah, there's the Hakuryu. Haven't done the tier 10 carriers in a little bit, so here's my Hakuryu update for 0 0.8.9. And I was going to close off and say hope you enjoyed, but I guess I should follow up with just my captain build. Oh, I got complimented. How nice. Anyway, my captain build hasn't changed. Neither have my modules. So just for, uh, just to go over them. Running air groups modification 1. Aircraft engines modification 1. Attack aircraft mod 1? That seems wrong. Why am I running attack aircraft mod 1? Hmm. Okay, I don't know why I'm running this, but I should really be running torpedo bombers mod 1. Like, you never use it anyway. When the heck did this happen? Also, don't demount. Always sell with credits. That's weird, but I recommend Torpedo Mo Bombers Modification 1. Many times in my commentaries, I have stressed the importance of TBM 1 in terms of giving you the 5 extra seconds on Torpedo Bombers attack time. It lets you arm your attacks out nice and far, get the reticle nice and tight before you touch the target's AA aura, which causes you the tightening of the reticle to be much, much slower. <clears throat> and then I'm taking increased bomber HP. The dive bombs on the hook tree are actually very important. So my argument here, unlike on the Shokaku, where I take a uh, torpedo bomber health, is that the strength of the squadrons, relatively speaking, is actually quite similar in terms of um, AP dive bombers versus 
torpedo bombers. Now, if torpedo bombers are less situational, there are going to be games, like, there's almost never a game where your torpedo bombers are useless, but there are going to be some games where your AP dive bombers are useless, especially in very destroyer-heavy matches, so... If you want to be safe taking, I would not fault you for taking Torpedo Bombers Modification 2 at all, but I just prefer to take uh, Bombers Modification 2 because in extremely, extremely heavy AA circumstances, this is usually a game populated by many AA cruisers, just like the one I just played just now. Uh, the dive, AP Dive Bombers are often one of the best ways to inflict damage because you can use the Slingshot attack to guarantee that you get damage onto targets. Now, I didn't Slingshot very much this game. didn't particularly have to. Usually I was able to find people who are isolated or low AE targets when inflicting AP dive bomber damage, but um, getting the increased bomber HP does mean that when you slingshot, you can increase the likelihoods of the slingshot landing. The argument for not putting the extra HP onto torpedo bombers is that you can use the heal to kind of heal tank your way through heavy AA fire if you really have to. The heal on torpedo bombers essentially giving you five seconds of immunity to damage, more or less, unless you fly into flak, of course. Uh, last in slot five, I'm taking flight control mod instead of concealment. I used to take concealment to get down to six one for concealment, and also because if if you use the other set of torpedo bombers, the mod eights, I believe, the three by four setup. Putting concealment on was important, of course, for getting the stealth torpedo bomber drops off with the 8 kilometer range and 6.1 kilometer plane stealth. But since that's no longer an option, I switched over to servicing time, and apart from being a little more vulnerable in terms of the hull, I haven't noticed it too much. And of course, in the last slot, just air groups modification too. I prefer taking raw plane health over raw plane speed, although it's kind of similar. But the number here is 7.5 versus 5. So 5% 5 increased cruising speed is kind of similar to 5% increased health because you're saying you move through AA bubbles 5% faster. So it's kind of like effective health and also means that you re the return time of your squadrons is faster, but I prefer the raw health of air groups modification too. I think it's just um, a more versatile upgrade. Captain-wise, my captain skills haven't changed. So of course the core 9 skills. Oh, actually they have changed, I guess, since I used to take Adrenaline Rush. So you take the Core 9 skills, then you take your Improved Engines, and you take your One Pointers, Improved Engine Boost, and Last Gasp, and then you take Concealment. And then you're stuck with the two points that you used to put into Adrenaline Rush. And, well, you can't take Adrenaline Rush anymore because of the way AA works. So basically, it used to be that AA was distributed over the Squadron Health, so it was beneficial to take Adrenaline Rush because as you tanked damage throughout the distributed squadron health, you'd get the adrenaline rush bonus and get the speed. But now because planes get chipped down one at a time, one at a time, one at a time, since it always looks at the percentage HP missing from all the planes left in the squadron, as planes die, that adrenaline rush bonus gets taken away. So it's only looking at that last plane getting chipped away for a little bit, and then the plane disappears and you lose the adrenaline, adrenaline rush bonus. So it's worthless, basically. So instead, with the two points, I take priority target, which is absolutely garbage, but there's nothing else to put into it. And I take direction center because that gives you an extra fighter on your self-defense fighter and also your patrol fighters. So you kill one more fighter, or one more attack plane. And yeah, that's my updated Hakiryu guide for 0 0.8.9. It was a pretty spicy game, and I hope you enjoyed it. Cheers!